and welcome to another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. My name is Ryan Narayan, and I have a special guest here today to talk specifically about mobile malware. Dennis Maslenikov is a security analyst at Kaspersky Lab specializing in mobile security issues. So Dennis, I want to start off specifically asking about the growth in mobile malware over the years. So would you say over the last, eh, let's say, two to three years, we've actually seen a, a gradual growth of um, malicious threats? Is it a slow growth? Is it growing very steadily? Give me a sense of what you're seeing in the lab. last two years, we see a not very uh, fast but stable growth. Gradual. So, uh, yeah, so uh, in 2008, 2009 and beginning of 2010, we saw uh, about, let's say, one modification of one new modification of mobile malware per day. Okay. So, I mean, approximately 30 new mobile malware per month. Mm -hmm. But last... Uh, unique samples? Is yeah, unique okay. samples. But last uh, two or three months, we started to see uh, a bit more mobile malware per day, let's say. Okay, so over the last, say, three months, you've seen a, 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 a somewhat of a spike in... Yeah, a small, small spike. Not very big, but still in June there was about... Uh, 80, uh, more than 80 modifications, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as for July and August, there were about mm -hmm. 45 or 50 modifications, so a bit more. What what exactly are you seeing? What is, what is this? What is the main uh, attack vector? Uh, the main attack vector are mm, for the last two years are SMS Trojan, so mo mal malicious applications which are trying to send uh, a lot of SMS messages to premium rate numbers. Right. So, and a premium rate number is uh, for people who don't understand what premium rate number is is uh, uh, like for instance in the US 900 numbers or or a, a number that a specialized number that charges uh, more the cost is much more expensive yep. to send an SMS to that number uh, are you seeing these SMS trojans on one particular platform versus another or are they distributed on, on well on mostly platforms? we see them on Java to micro edition platform and I can answer you so sure definitely why Symbian right uh, no, 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 Java no. to ME. It okay, means right, right. Uh, Java to Micro Edition. So this platform is supported not only by smartphones like Symbian smartphones or Windows mobile smartphones, but also by simple mobile right, phones. Right, right. So it means that today there is no like Windows uh, leader in a mobile operating system market share. There is Symbian, there is Windows mobile, we have iPhone, we have Android, we have Blackberry, we have simple mobile right, phones. Right, right. So that's why cyber criminals are trying to target as many devices as they can. So that is why they choose Java to ME platform, because they can attack simple mobile phones, they can attack Symbian phones, they can attack Windows mobile smartphones. Right. Are you seeing a lot of activity around Android phones? Because that's uh, we, we are seeing, uh, hearing from the Android handset makers and from, you know, with this big competition between Android devices and iPhone devices, that there's a dramatic surge in interest around Android and Android market share is growing rapidly. So there's a lot of thought around uh, what kinds of malicious things are happening there. Give me a sense of what you're seeing specifically for Android. Well, almost the same situation. So uh, in the beginning of August, we found first SMS Trojan for Android pl platform. So it was real first uh, commercialized mobile malware for Android. Mm -hmm. It was also created by Russian hackers or hacker. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, distributed as a movie player for playing different right. kind of videos, but in fact it was only trying to send uh, three SMS messages to premium rate numbers. And this is a malicious application delivered through uh, Android App Store or delivered on websites? No, no, no. How, how, it how, was how is the end user getting infected? Uh, uh, for example, if user was trying to search uh, different things in Google, for example, from mm -hmm. maybe some kind of videos, and so there's search engine optimization yeah, attached some to some kind of, of the so, uh, techniques. So the first SMS Trojan which we found and the second, uh, probably they were created by the same group or by the same hacker and uh, they are probably were delivered via search engine optimization. So if user from his Android device is trying to search for something, uh, probably for porn, right. and uh, some of the top uh, right. Google so sites. So I go to Google and I say porn player or porn for Android. No, just simple. You can even search even simpler, uh, easier requests, or like uh, just for example. So they recognize that they 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 they, they gotcha. uh, they recognize the user agent uh, you are searching from, and if you're searching from Android device, they will give you, uh, they will suggest you to download a special uh, APK file. Right, which and is which is a. a, a something pretending to be a porn player, but yep. that's in fact a piece of malware. Yep. 
Yep. And the, the SMS messages are silently sent. Do I get any uh, any warning that an SMS well, message is uh, being sent? Well, it is uh, usual when the, that when you're trying to install any kind of application to your Android device, you will see the notifications from the device that, for example, this application is trying to access your phone book, mm -hmm. is trying to dial different numbers, or is, or is trying to send SMSs but to your But this is during the installation process. Yep. Okay. But after that, if uh, this application was installed and you uh, you would see it in your application list. You will try to if you if you try to launch right. it, it will uh, immediately send uh, four SMS messages to one premium rate number, right. and that's all. And, and the finished. cost of one of those SMS messages is will cost five bucks, up, um, uh, as far as uh, it was seven dollars for example. So seven dollars per SMS. Yep. So and. This is a specific issue uh, to one uh, one country, one region in the world. Is it? Did, uh, is there a, a geographic distribution component to this? Well, uh, only Russian users uh, can lose their money if they were affected by this trojan. Okay, so it's specifically made and targeting Russian users, but that does yep. not mean it's only it's only a risk and a, and a threat to Russian users, right? Yep, because uh, there is a probability that let's say cyber criminals will try to. Uh, lease or rent uh, premium rate numbers uh, in other countries. Right. And they can maybe rent premium rate numbers, let's say, in Ukraine, then in Latvia, then they go further, further. They, they probably they can try to distribute their right. activities all over the world, not have, only in our country. Seen, have you seen any evidence that uh, this is just the work of one guy, this is just the work of, uh, you know, one or two small malicious groups? Or are you seeing evidence that we are actually uh, uh, mobile malware is starting to take uh, take on the, the the visibility of what we've seen on the computer and desktops, where there's affiliates involved, there's all kinds of distribution uh, techniques involved, there's uh, multiple components. To we these already attacks. have the situation right now uh, in terms of mobile malware, and specifically in Russia. So we saw a lot of affiliate networks connected with mobile malware. We saw. Uh, with, with Android mm -hmm. uh, Trojan, with our search engine optimization. So there are different uh, groups of cyber criminals who are working closely together in order to distribute mobile right. malware, in order to earn as more, more money right, as, right, they, right. as they can. What kind of money is being earned on this thing? What? what how, how much money can, can, a, can a, mobile, uh, uh, a mobile malware operator using uh, SMS Trojans well, make? Give me a ballpark number. Well, uh, I would be careful, but we think that, uh, that, there, that the damage is equal to hundreds of thousands of dollars, so it's really yeah. big. And uh, uh, a lot of this targets people who prepay for mobile services. Yep. So it's not like you see a bill at the end of the month and you see these strange charges yeah, on your, yeah. on your uh, bill. In exactly. Russia, it is usual that uh, people use prepaid phone numbers. It's almost everyone uses prepaid phone numbers. Mm -hmm. So uh, they have a phone bill, they have mm -hmm. some money on, them, on it, right. and that's all they're using, they're dialing, they uh, right. For example, the bill goes lower, and if they were if they were infected with the SMS surgeon, uh, they will see that they lose almost right, all, right. all their money. Fascinating stuff. Thank you very much, Dennis. Thank you, Ryan. And thank you for watching another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. Search for us on YouTube and on SecureList.com. <laughs> <laughs>